Say a prop. Mm -hmm. These things are a little finicky to start the first time. Clear. People. I really appreciate that. <laughs> yeah. Why isn't it moving? How do you hear me? Uh, here in the left ear. Oh, you hear me? Yeah, I hear you. Test one, two. Uh, is it working? I hear... Well, I don't hear myself. Well, no, I do. Here, put it a little bit closer to your face. The mic on that one's just a little bit... Um... Test one, two. Yeah, I can hear you all right. It's not super loud, but I can hear you. Okay. I'm not sure if it's because of this thing or whatever. No, I was like that yesterday too. That one has the best uh, noise canceling of any of our rental headsets, so that's why I gave you that one. Gotcha. Alright, from the reach. So these steer a little bit differently than Cessnas or some of the other um, common GA planes in that they don't have nose wheel steering. Right. So the rudders aren't actually steering the gear. You have to use tow brakes and a rudder, right. which is why once you get experience, people tend to taxi a little bit faster in these because then you don't have to hit the brakes as much. Oh, you, oh okay. I see. Yeah, because then your rudder's more effective. Right. Um, but yeah, usually when you start out um, learning in them, it's kind of like just very, very slow because it's hard to get comfortable with the, the brakes. Brakes, yeah. And it wears them down too, considering. What'd you say? It wears them down too, considering it. Uh, it doesn't do as much as you think, because if you're taxiing well, you're just kind of doing like quick little brake taps. You shouldn't really be sitting on them. Okay. But it's like one of those things that takes a little bit longer to get a hang of than step on the pedal and it turns. Okay. Not three. Five left two only two. Traffic. 
Alpha gun Alpha 3, mine hold short so we can zip past you here on Alpha. Roger that. I got you, sir. Fight through a phone. Oh, he's turning. Okay. Like, he said he was coming back this way. I'm like, what, what are you doing? You said you'd hold short. <laughs> I guess it's not a one way. Now, um, this airport's very, very good for training. Uh, one of the benefits of training here versus some of the other fields in the New York area is that it's uncontrolled. There's no tower that you have to deal with waiting for departure delays. That said, you also get all the local yahoos that go up in the pattern doing incorrect procedures, and you got to be really careful. I've got gotcha. you. Yeah, that was my next question was how they handle the uh, comms with this they don't have like a, a ground yep it's uh this one since it's uncontrolled you have uh an asos which is the weather which is what we just listened to and then you have 122.72 is uh, a common traffic advisory frequency hmm. so if you have a radio you're supposed to announce your position when you're in the airport area so like when we take off you'll hear me call that we're taking off on 22 departing vfr to the northwest hmm. when we enter the downwind you'll hear me calling that we're entering the downwind and you'll call base final Versus tower would just clear you in a normal controlled airfield. Done. Yeah, this is quite the uh, tighter fit than I thought it would be. Yeah, I, I, I personally did all of my private pilot training in the Diamond 40s. I think they're like another 30 or $40 an hour, but they're way bigger and more comfortable. Yeah. Orange Conway, Skyhawk is wrong, is holding short runway 2-2 for departure. Orange County. The same? Yeah. It, it's a little heavier on a Diamond 40, and you also got to worry about the prop lever, but otherwise they're very, very similar in how they handle. But, like, just to put it in perspective, like, we're kind of tight in here, but if we were in a one, uh, oh, you didn't grab your seatbelt? Yep. Get it. <laughs> I'm like, wait a sec. I just looked over, I'm like, oh. That's all right, we still got to do a run-up. But like, if you were in a 152, the two of us would not fit. Like, we'd be too heavy to take off. Really? Yep. Like, I weigh like 230, 240. Like, I can't fit with anybody uh, over about 150 in a 152. Should oh, it comes out. Yeah, that's as loose as it goes. That looks like it fits pretty good. Yeah. Alright, we'll get in front of these guys. So, since it's an uncontrolled field, we don't have tower making sure we have traffic clearance, so we have to make sure we scan the pattern before we take off. Okay. So as we're taxiing up, we're going to hold short here. We're looking for base on both directions and final. No one's there. Mm -hmm. No one's in the downwind. No one's in the upwind or the crosswind. We want to make sure that we're clear. And if we see somebody... Yeah, that guy right there is... Yeah. Orange County traffic, Diamond 30 Yankee is taking 2 2 departing 45 right across wind, VFR to the northwest, Orange County. Oh, yeah. right, we have the traffic and final on site. What is he doing? Orange County, why is Skyhawk is starting to the southeast now for departure? This is the last call, Orange County. Just a heads up, it might be a little bumpy until we get to altitude just because we got some winds coming over these like little hills here. Yep. Yeah, I expect it. Shouldn't be too bad today. This seems loose, I don't know why this ain't tightened up. They don't suck they don't. all the way in. I'm more concerned that you have the waist belt on because they're going to catch if you lurch forwards. Got it. Oh, okay, got it. I thought this one let up slack or not. Taking it all. 
all the way to the end. Yeah. Here, clear. Orange County traffic, Diamond 3 0 Yankee taking 2 2 VFR to the northwest. Orange County. Alright, since we got a little bit of a right crosswind, we're just going to use some right stick to start and then we'll bring that out as we get some more airspeed. Okay. We're going to line up, we got 2 2 outside, we're clear of traffic. And then as we add power, we need some right rudder. You can follow along on the controls if you want. Okay. We're going to rotate at about 50 ish miles an hour, so we just slowly bring it back and let the airplane fly off the field. Pull back just a little bit, give ourselves some trim to help. Pull back a little bit more. And when we get to 800 feet, we can raise the flaps. Five to eighty, we're climbing. You start turning as a Cirrus is climbing up behind us. Orange County traffic, Diamond 30 Yankee, departing the pattern via 45 degree right crosswind via part of the northwest Orange County. And you'll notice as we climb, if you look at your ball, you actually need to use a little bit of right rudder. Okay. That's just because of P-factor from the prop while we climb out. Now, right now, you have controls. Yep. So you can fly from here. We're high enough. I'm okay. comfortable. Okay. Yep, your controls. My controls. Why don't we just hold this heading and keep climbing and give yourself a little bit of nose back trip until we get above 1400 and then we can turn that way. I just want to be out of the traffic pattern before we cut over it. Uh, to turn like that way. Pull back just a little bit. We'll just keep that climb going. Let's go up to like 2,500. You can pull back a little bit more. Make sure you give yourself some of that trim so you can flick that little toggle switch down a little bit. There, that's a good heading. Our goal is we just want to be outside the airport traffic pattern because we're going to be doing some maneuvering. Remember, it's a little bit of right rudder in the climb. Trim up a little bit more, get some more trim. We want to hold about 80, we'll climb the vest. Can you fly this with the uh, left hand or right Yeah, usually when you're on the left seat, you want to fly with the left hand, right seat, you want to fly with the right hand, that way you can reach the throttle. Right. you give me a turn like pointed at the ridge and then we'll turn like along the ridge and that'll be clearing turns we'll just look for traffic the ridge right there. yep you can just point right at the ridge you can take it a little bit steeper than that if you want just pull back a little bit just keep that climb going now we're looking around outside for traffic not really seeing anybody all right why don't you give me a turn this way Uh, we'll call these clearing turns just to make sure no one's around us while we're flying, doing turns and maneuvers and such. All right, let's take that heading. That's a good heading. All right, so once we get to 2,500, we're just going to push the nose down and hold the horizon. And you'll notice that it's a little bit of uh, forward control force you need. So you can flick up on that toggle switch as you need to take away that pressure. Just try and hold it right on the horizon. It's a little bit nose lower. 
Now if you just keep hitting it to get it level, if you, if you have to pull back then, you flick it down. If you have to push forward, you flick it up. Uh, why don't you try like a steep turn to the left? We'll try and go to 45 degrees bank just so you can get a feel because you've been doing real well with the other turns. And this is 45, yep? Yep, that's 45. So as you roll through 30, just you can get that bank going a little bit faster. As you roll through 30, you just pull a little bit of back pressure and you just keep that turn coming. You're going to feel some G's. A little bit more back pressure. A little bit less bank, just because I think your attitude indicator is lagging a little bit. And then why don't you try going to the right? Pull a little bit of power. You know. And if you want to hold level, you just pull back a little bit. You can turn a little bit steeper than this. Why don't we go so a little bit to the right, like that, and then we'll pull the back pressure. Yeah, we're kind of holding the horizon now. Yep. Yeah, I'm looking too much down and not forward. Yep, you got to look outside. You want to try and imagine you're keeping that prop pointed at the horizon. So once we're facing this way, we'll roll out of the turn. So we'll just keep that turn coming. All right. A little bit more back pressure. That's good. And then we can roll out right here. And you'll notice we'll have to push the nose forwards a little bit as we get shallower. See? Nothing to it. Nothing. Now, was there any, were you doing any runner control or that was no runner? You need it when you first roll into it. I was helping a little bit. The plane naturally wants to stay pretty coordinated. Okay. But here, let's do a 30 degree bank to the left. And right as you ring it in, you're going to need to step on the ball a little bit, you'll notice. So 30 degrees, keep going, keep going, keep going, pull back. And you'll see you need just a little bit of left pedal. You see how the ball's centered? Yep. Versus like whip it to the right pretty quick. I see. So like if you bring it to the right, same degrees, like go to the right pretty fast, so we'll go faster. See how you need some rudder right now? So yep. you just bring some rudder and you see it's more coordinated. That would be right one, right? Yep. So when you see the ball come out of the thing, step on the ball. Cool though, right? Yeah, cool. It, it's definitely a, it's definitely a change once you get the feel of the G's and it, it offsets you for a little bit, you know, just feeling it, especially the sinks and the dips. Versus, and versus when you do a steep turn and you don't have enough back pressure, I'm like, there's not enough G's, something's wrong, we're right. driving. Right. And then you see the airspeed, I'm like, no, 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 we need to pull back more. Right. The G's is something you don't feel every day, so you're like, is this right or is it not? Yeah, no, it, it just takes getting some getting used to. So if you want to try climbing, why don't you try climbing and do a climbing turn. We'll climb up to like 3,000. So you go full throttle on this. All right. All the way forwards. That's a good pace what you just did there. Then we're going to pitch up. Hold like this pitch angle. And trim it so that it's comfortable. Anywhere from like 80. Is it pushing it up? No, pull, pull it down. Up down? Yeah, it's like swiping that wheel down. Ah, uh, okay. And then why don't you give me like a left turn, like 20 to 30 degrees of bank, so somewhere in here on the edge of here. this heading so level out and then push that nose forwards a little bit you'll notice we're going to get faster and you're going to have to push that toggle switch up to make it comfortable to hold the stick yeah, as our airspeed goes higher and higher yeah. you need more and more trim to hold that stick where you want it to now why don't you pull some power pull it so that we're at like 1800 rpm so right here you got to pull through it there's like a dead zone in the middle of the throttle on these things keep going keep going more back I think it goes way back, okay. Yeah, keep going, keep going. A little bit forward. Right there, that's a good heading. You can let that nose drop, let that uh, nose yeah. drop, we'll do a descent. Descent, all right. Just so you can get a feeling for a descent. Right. Every flight maneuver is made up of one of four things. It's a climb, a turn, a or a, a descent, or it's straight and level. 
Every maneuver is just the four of those mixed at different degrees. If you can get good at climbs and turns, uh, descents and straight level flight, and get comfortable with it, you'll be able to learn any flight maneuver. And you're picking up pretty quickly. The, the, the stick makes it pretty intuitive. You just kind of point it where you want it to go. Why don't you give me a turn in the descent and go to the right? We do a stall together just so you get to see it. So we've been doing a lot of turns. I've been scanning for traffic, so we're looking around. All right. So we want to lose some airspeed. So the first thing we're going to do is we'll go to slow flight. You'll we'll yep. just get to see some maneuvers now. Now we're good on flap speed. Okay. Slow enough. And you'll notice we're going to add some trim. So you're still on the controls. I'm just helping. Okay. Um, you'll notice how the flight controls feel a little bit mushier. Yep. Oh, let, let me pull a little bit. You kind of push it forwards a little bit. I just hold it there. Right there. Yep. And we're going to need some more back trim. See how, like, if you want to take a turn, it feels like very bushy and unresponsive? Yeah. That's because we're going slow. So that's just kind of less airspeed going over the ailerons makes the, the airplane a little bit less controllable. Got it. So if we cut the power and imagine we're coming in for a landing, right? There we get a nice descent rate going. We're kind of at our approach speed. Don't pull back, don't pull back. Okay, good. Yep, we're just gonna let it descend. So now let's say we start pulling back when we shouldn't be, right? Mm -hmm. Pull it back towards the horizon. Get back. I want you to see what a stall feels like. We'll hold it at the horizon. Just through power off. See how it's kind of getting wobbly as we get slower and slower? Yep. Yep. We're gonna feel that nose drop in a second once we bottom out the aileron, uh, elevator. See, these things don't really want to stall. Yeah, wow. So it's kind of, it, see, these are kind of, it's kind of stalling. It drops the nose, it gains about five knots, and it's flying again. So let's call that a stall. We drop the nose right below the horizon. Fly back. Go full power. Get some airspeed. Level it. Flaps go up to takeoff. Get some more airspeed. We can start climbing. Verify both vertical speed and altimeter. Both are moving. We're still climbing. We can put the flaps down. I mean, up, I'm sorry. And then we're just going to keep climbing. Positive rate, we recovered from that stall. You see how a lot of people teach it, you shove the nose down. We dropped it right below the horizon, we were flying again. Yeah, it, it, yeah. We probably lost like 50 feet. So we can level off here. But you get the idea of like, you get like that buffet. I don't know why our stall horn wasn't going off, but normally the stall horn would be going. Right. Yeah, I was waiting to hear it because I thought it would be triggering right, right about here or something. This thing actually stalls in like the 30s to 40s. Oh, really? Yeah, these, th these things want to fly. We'll just turn left, get away from this ridge. Oh. Don't give you control. Ah, uh, you can keep it. You can keep it. We're just going to turn. I'm just trying to help you along a little bit. Now, let's see how we're doing on time. So we probably should head back. All right. I don't have anything after this, but I know James does. All right. So what we'll do is, why don't I'm gonna let you do this? Why don't you pull some power out? Go to maybe like 1500 RPMs. So you're gonna have to pull quite a bit through that dead zone. Keep going. All right. Yep. And then let that nose drop. We'll give it some forward trim. So push that trim forwards a little bit. Yep. Push it up. And we're gonna let it bring us down. We want to come down like 80 to 90 knots. Yep. See that field way out there? That's Orange County. So why don't you turn me about 20 degrees to the right, and we're going to enter in at a 45 degree to the downwind. That's a good heading right there. Seems really easy to hit the mic transmit on the stick, too. Yeah, you got to be careful with it. It's meant to be in a convenient place, though, so you don't have to think about it when you're trying to hit it. That's true. Mark, 
high traffic diamond, 3-0 Yankee is 7 miles to the north. We're going to be maneuvering to enter 45 into the right downwind, 422 Orange Point. Orange Point traffic green says right downwind, correction right across from runway 22 Orange County. Orange County traffic diamond, 4 mile final, 22. That's James. Alright. That was James, the last one. Oh, that was? Yep, yep. He's a little bit better at time management than I am. <laughs> I'd rather be flying. Hey, you know. It's fun up here. You gotta stay. What'd you think? Definitely different from what I'm expecting. I mean, especially when it comes to visibility on a slightly foggy day. Like, well, not foggy, but I guess... Uh, this would still be like 20 miles of visibility, just to put in perspective. Like, yeah. we're seven miles from that airport, and we can see uh, almost to the horizon. <laughs> um, like, three mile visibility would be like, we could see that close field right here, and that's it. Wow. Okay. Yeah, like, you, you hear like three, four mile visibility, like, that's really bad. You hear one mile visibility, that's awful. That's awful. <laughs> like, think about this. If we had one mile vis, we'd barely be able to see the plane at the end of the runway when we took off. Wow. All like, right. Because that, that runway is 5,000 feet long. Probably what helps, though, is uh, I see where sunglasses come into play. Yeah, if, if you get into flight training, buy a good pair of sunglasses. Yeah. Good. Just don't get polarized. Don't get more. Oh, right. Yeah, because these have anti-glare coatings. Right. It'll it'll black out the screens on you. Gotcha. All right, let's add some power because we're at pattern altitude. So we'll go to like 2400. Remember, just give it, hold it, hold it on the horizon, and then give it some trim. And kind of what I was thinking. Um, I'll land it, but follow along on the controls so you can kind of see how it feels. Absolutely. Keep giving yourself some nose down trim if it wants to climb. We're just trying to go a little bit faster. It'll get home a little bit faster. Yeah, the thumb, the thumb thing feels weird. Um, the 40s are a little bit nicer. They have a trim wheel. Yeah. So they have electric trim and the trim wheel. I like the trim wheel better because you can move it like a quarter of an inch and you know it moved right. a quarter of an inch. Right. This you're kind of just trusting how much it moved yeah. when you hit it. Yeah, I wish it vibrated when you actually hit it. Yeah, this one, it's not, um, it's not an actual trim tab. What these do is they have like, um, it's electronic, it, it basically puts control force against the stick for you. Okay. So you don't have to use as much. Got it. Versus on the diamond, it has like a little flip tab on the back of the tail. And then like, let's say you want the elevator to go down, that little tab will flip up and it'll push the elevator down aerodynamically on the trailing edge. I right, see so we're climbing a little bit. We can push that nose forwards a little bit. And see, there's our airport right there. We're just keeping an eye for traffic. After doing all the turns and everything else, I'm kind of... Where am I? You know? Yeah, we were just up to the northwest. That's our practice area. It's uh, It's got up the least traffic in the area, and it's flat. There's places to land if you lost an engine. Got it. If you go way north of here, like 10, 15 miles, you got the, the, the Sky Acres. It's like a skydiving place, you gotta be really careful because they drop jumpers and their oh. their pilots are not very good, so they don't always announce it on New York Approach like they're supposed to. Yeah, that'd be a that, problem. That's what I was listening to, is in case he was up there. Right. And then that guy also has the habit of New York Approach will call out traffic to him at like a clock position, and he'll turn towards the traffic. <laughs> yeah, it's like, what are you doing there, dude? It's pretty toasty in here, I'll tell you that much. Oh yeah, today's not even a hot day. These things in the summer, it's like a greenhouse. Oh yeah. That said though, these things have very good air vents once you're at altitude, like if you're moving that. Oh, I see. Yeah, you can like turn it, uh, turn it counterclockwise. Oh, uh, yep. Or, I'm sorry, clockwise, yep. And then you can, you can angle it. like about some of the other glass cockpits in terms of the G1000 and stuff like that, being able to see what's ahead of you, even on like the virtual... Uh, yeah, you can, you can get terrain on there. Terrain. They, they have really good traffic too. Like this thing does, doesn't really have any traffic. We're only looking outside to see it. But right. so you, you got to have your head on a swivel when you're in these. That said, learning on a six pack, it makes you a lot more aware of your instruments because you have to more aggressively scan them to keep on top of it. True. Versus like the G1000 kind of makes things easy mode sometimes. Right. Orange Bay traffic.
Traffic Diamond 30 Yankees gonna be entering a right downwind two or two two out of forty five orange kind. Yeah, so the FAA recommended way to enter the traffic pattern in an uncontrolled field is either a 45 degree entry on the downwind or you fly over the airport 500 to 1,000 feet above it and do like a teardrop into the 45 for the downwind. Oh. That way it gives everybody time to see each other. Got it. But one thing you'll have people here that don't train well, that they'll like come in on like a long final and cut off people in the traffic pattern. You'll have people coming the wrong way on base. Like, you gotta be careful on uncontrolled field, but yeah, the grand scheme of things there's more positives than negatives because you can get a lot more in without like delays because no one's telling you you can't get in the pattern. We're just constantly looking for traffic. I like our power setting. We want to be doing about 85. We're a little fast, but it's windy, so we're good. And then see the inside of that lake? That's kind of where we want to be on our downwind. Got it. And then what we're going to do, when we get a beam the 1,000 footers, um, uh, we want to go through like a flow checklist. So there's different ways to do that in different airplanes. I like to just sweep across the panel. We're going to go full mixture. Yep. We're going to hit the flaps at the end, fuel pumps on, all of our lights are on. And then now that we're getting even it, we're going to pull power a little bit. We'll put flaps in. We're, we're just checking we're on speed. We're under 100 knots. And you can see that's all right here. Okay. That power setting is good. How are we doing? Good. Great here. Uh, eight miles. Once the field from there, that's our good field. Right down when. Right away. Already on. Guys, have a damage to Delta Half. What about a few miles? And these hills must right add like a little bit of. Yeah, you'll get the. Hang on one second. Orange County traffic, Diamond 30 Yankee, right base 2 2, full stop, Orange County. Um, <laughs> So when the wind is coming over the hills, it'll get an updraft on the back side of them when it hits it, and it comes up and over, and you hit like pretty good downdrafts off the back of it, it like comes like this over it. And then you'll get like rotor wash coming over the tree line when you're coming in on final. It's only when it's like 18 gusting 30. Right. But it'll get it'll get pretty spicy if you're not careful. You just gotta basically bring in extra power and stay fast. Just trying to slow so we're within our flap speed. Yeah. And I just follow along on the controls. Yeah. I won't input. I'll just hold. You're fine, you follow along. Then we're just gonna line up with that center line. Orange County traffic number three zero Yankee final two two stop orange county. Line up on that center line. We're a little bit high on the approach, but I like that one on windy days just because it gives us more reaction time if something was to happen. Mm -hmm. um, we're also a little fast normally. The book speed in this is 60. I like 65 and 70 when it's gusty because you can kind of feel how mushy they are already, and we're doing 68. Right. Um, you'll, it makes you just makes you float a little bit longer on the runway, but we're on a 5,000 foot runway. I'm not really concerned with that. You feel how we got some sync going right as we're coming over the trees? Yep. That's right off those hills. And the one thing you'll notice in this, maybe compared to what you're used to, if you're flying like 172s and stuff in the sim, yeah. this one, when you're in ground effect, it feels like you're about to smack the runway. Because <laughs> you're really low to the ground. Yeah, you feel that sync as we cleared the tree line? Yep. Just add a little power and put the nose down. Yeah, you see how, we're, see how low we feel? Yeah, I see how slow and how it just glides. Now we bring the flaps up. Now I'll take the next one. And you were complaining about the other guy. <laughs> what do you mean? Diamond going all the way down. Uh, we're not going to go all the way to the end. Oh, okay, we're going to okay. take the middle one. I thought there was uh, I didn't realize there was a middle one. No, he, like, he went all the way to the end of the runway, and I'm like, dude, what are you doing? I don't like trying to make the first one when it's windy out because it makes you do stupid things trying to cut it short. Like, I could have slammed the brakes and made that, but it's really bad for the brakes. Right. So, lights, you might hit landing light. Yep. And I already got the flaps. Else for the checklist, sorry, John. Oh, sorry. 
If you're in flight training and go through a checklist, but I fly these every day, so mm -hmm. I do the mental checklist. Orange County traffic, Diamond 3 0 Yankee is clear of 2 2 Orange County. It's just kind of an indicator. You, you don't really use it other than when you're on taking off. And if you forget which way to put the let switch, um, you just set it to neutral on takeoff. Um, but other than that, it's kind of just a feel thing. Okay. Yeah, the aircraft, do you normally go, uh, like partial on that, or? Um, so when you first talk to ATC, you're supposed to use all five, um, so you'd say either Diamond 4130 Yankee or November 4130 Yankee. Okay. Um, and then if ATC calls back with three digits, like November 30 Yankee, then you can say 30 Yankee. Got it. I called my tail sign a couple times in the pattern, and then I'm like, all right, like, they don't need to hear it every time. Right. Um, some airports, it's required by NOTAM to use your whole call sign. So, like, if you go into Homestead, Florida, hmm. there's a NOTAM out that says use your whole call sign because they have so many accidents that they want people actually announcing their tail numbers for the voice recorders. Oh, well, yeah, that makes sense. Are you fine? Get this. Sorry, I missed it. 